Alright, that's the planetary gear. Okay, this is the reverse reaction drum. If you look, it's got two different patterns. If you look closely, you notice, in this case, what's on the right is the little bit longer teeth. That goes in first onto that planetary gear. Just drops right in, locks in, seats into place. Next to go in is the reverse band. And you just click it on this little post here. That little ring groove. different with one hand so have patience I'm also a rookie at this so there we go just kind of fits in gravity's taking it down but once everything's in it'll kind of come back up the little servo comes in here pushes down to engage it to grip for reverse pull the servo from the other the top half here Next is this little sun gear with the washer, which only goes on one way. There's special grooves in there. It only lines up one way with that washer. And this just kind of drops in. Seats in place. Now, it's hard to see on here probably, but there's little grooves on that little sun gear shaft whatever the name is like I said I'm kind of a rookie so I don't know all the terms but these grooves line up with that same as that washer so try to get a picture of it but once you got it lined up it'll literally just drop right in like that so you got that gap on the sides there I believe it's probably just for trans fluid to get in for oil to get in between there, that's my guess. But like I said, rookie, so I don't know for sure. Okay, this is with both clutch packs just kind of set in there. They're not fully dropped in. The top of this little hub here has to be flush with this little groove where my fingers in back there which is probably a good half inch away where those clutches gotta drop in just yet but I need both hands for that so I'm gonna put down the camera here set that back in and move on to the next step Okay, to get this seated in, this hub with this little groove here, I got the five year old here. Hi, Wesley. Hi. Holding the screwdriver and that reverse reaction drum to lock it in place. And you spin the center piece and kind of shake it. It drops those clutches into place and it drops it down to make it flush. But you just got to kind of play with it. Rock it back and forth, and I got it to seat into place. I don't know if that's the correct way, but that's the way that worked for me. Now this is another step that kind of requires two hands. So I can't fully do it while the camera's in hand, but... Okay. Now, we're going that back and forth. Got it to seat. It'll be just less than flush to the case. Just a little bit lower than where the case is, if you see that. And it lines up roughly with this bolt, this little pinhole, whatever that is, a guide pin, I don't know. Lines up like right about there. Next is the chain. Okay, that's the chain set in place, which was another two-hander, big surprise. Um, just kind of both set both down and lined up at the same time and it kind of slides right in. Now in the books it was telling me to put the uh, output shaft in first and then this fourth clutch hub on after it but the way this one has the bearing design uh, 
uh, the bearing design there, I found it made more sense to put that on first and then drop this in as a hole. And this little groove here is what goes through. Focus. There we go. That little groove there is where the C clip goes through the differential and locks the output drive shaft into place and keeps that uh, differential in place. And it just kind of sets into place. You can hear the, the gears of the differential. That's what's moving right now. But new chain, very minimal slack. Obviously, it's new. Uh, oh, we weren't fully seated. There we go. That's fully seated. Okay, these are the clutches for the fourth gear. This is the order they came off. They're sitting like this, so I'm going to reverse them. Start at the back. Notice there's three tabs. One goes here, the other one goes there. And then from there it's just and also notice which all the books will say too. This is the smooth side, the other side is a machine side that goes down. So smooth side against the clutches. again smooth side down on the clutch machine side up and get the oops there we go okay then just line up the gaskets and the valve body which I'll need two hands for so I'm gonna set down the camera and set the valve body in place. Actually, first I should mention and not forget to put the uh, shafts through. That shaft drives the uh, actual the, the pump goes into the torque converter. It's the small shaft on the torque converter side. And if you don't want to do your stuff twice like I just did, you're going to want to put that black plastic scoop in first, and then put the clutch plates on for the fourth gear. Okay, this is just to illustrate the cardboard technique that I used for the valve body bolts, just to kind of keep them in place. The only thing that's missing from there are the pump bolts, which are on the pump behind the cardboard there. A little sneak peek. The seal's already pressed in. Now it's time to put this thing back together again. Okay, to avoid yet another rookie mistake and having to do your stuff twice, get this little gear selector rod onto the valve body before you set the valve body on. That way you don't have to take it all the way off after you have it all torqued out. Okay, as a rookie learning here, having to do stuff over, that little dam or scoop, whatever this yellow plastic one is, that one goes after the valve body is set into place. So the black one in goes in before the clutches, and the little yellow one up here goes in after the valve body. and sets right in place on the base of the valve body there. Okay, the valve body is set in place and all the bolts are set in place. Something to note here, um, just following the, the manual, it said to put transmission fluid inside all these bolt holes. Um, so I just took a little oil can filled it with tranny fluid and pumped a couple squirts into the bottom of there. Um, 
it's probably because it didn't really state it but it's most likely because of galvanic corrosion because this housing is aluminum and this is all steel bolts um, so I think that oil barrier keeps it from getting that you know locked up galvanic corrosion is the actual name google it if you want more info but uh, yeah something to note also something to note is to put all these in by hand I'm just using they're so loose you can just use a extension.